Hey gang, so it's time to start our calculus unit. So hopefully you have this a 29 page packet. We're just we're just gonna go through it, man. We're gonna make this work. Okay, so we are doing what's called differential calculus. So what is this? So differential calculus, it's all about finding the slope of a curve at any point. So you're used to finding the slope of a line. You're like, oh, I know that. It's y equals mx plus b. M is the slope. But what if I gave you a curve? Could you find the slope on this curve at any point? Let's say I put that point right there. Could you find the slope of that curve? Well, what differential calculus is going to be about is in order to find the slope at that point right there, we're going to create what's called a tangent line. And you should be familiar with tangent lines from geometry. Tangent lines, they touch the point right here at that spot. That's the only spot that they touch it. And so we're going to find the slope of the tangent line, which in turn will give us the slope of this curve at that point. So for differential calculus, just kind of an overview, we are going to have two goals that we are going to do for this particular unit. And really, it's the same goals if we were actually um, in a calculus class in college, it would be the same thing. The first one is we're going to find the tangent, tangent meaning the tangent line, to a curve at a point. So the first thing we're going to be doing, and that's what we're going to be doing for the next like four or five blocks, is this one right here. We're going to find the tangent, and by that we're talking about the tangent line, to a curve at a point. And I'm just going to say at any point because it's going to be, it could be different. You know, it could be that point there. It could be the point over here. It could be the point down here. There's going to be lots of, there's infinitely many tangent lines. Oh, that kind of slanted up there, didn't it? That's okay. And we're going to find different tangent lines, and we're going to find different curves, different, not different curves, different points on the curve, and we're going to have a lot of different tangent lines. Okay, so that's going to be like part one of what we do. And then after spring break, when we come back, we're going to find what calculus is all about as well. And that is, given two spots on a graph, on a curve really, I should say the word curve. What if I wanted to find the area, I'm gonna get a different color, the area under, the, under this curve, under this parabola, of just this part right here? What if I wanted to know the area of that? So with geometry, you might go, well, could I, could I make a, a square right here? and like a rectangle and could I find the area of that and then maybe I could find like this is sort of a semicircle and maybe I could kind of add it to that and that would maybe be an okay estimation but with calculus we can actually get a really precise area underneath that curve it's it's like so cool how it ends up working out so anyway so part two after spring break we are going to find the area Find the area under a curve between two points. Under a curve between any two points. And we're going to use integration to do that. So it's super cool. So just so you guys know, these are our two main goals for this unit for calculus. Okay. Now we're just going to touch on it. Those of you that have actually had calculus before or you've been in pre-cal, some of it should be a repeat of what you've already seen, but we're just going to kind of we're going to kind of just go through this a little bit. Okay? So let's start off. So the concept of a limit. So we're going to do what's called the tangent problem. So when we look at the tangent line here, when we talked about that, the tangent line touches the curve at a single point. So I'm going to find my problem, which is what's the slope at that point. So let's say, let's just draw a point on here. That'll be easier. Okay. So let's say I have maybe something that looks like this. I'm going to move my notes over here out of the way. Um, and I'm going to say, what if I have a point P? Okay. So here's my point P. Let me zoom in just a little bit on that. I apologize for the background noise. They're kind of loud. 
Okay, so I want to know, let's just write this here. What is the slope at the point P on this curve? Okay, this is kind of the big overall question that we end up having. This is like our, our issue. What is the slope at P on this curve? How can I figure it out? Okay, from algebra one, what do you know about the slope? Okay, let's just let's just write down some stuff. We know that the slope is maybe rise over run. We know that. And then we also know maybe some of you did delta y over delta x. And some of you may be thinking really practical. Well, isn't it that formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1? Oh, hey. Oh, sorry. My guys are being really loud. I'll get them to close the door. Um, and that's how I found the slope. In order to use that, I had to have, if you remember, y1 and or I'm sorry, x1 and y1. Oh, okay. I'm highly distracted by my children in the background being really loud. And I had to have x2 and y2, right? I had to have two points. But um, yeah, as I look at that, I don't have two points. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put another point on there. Okay, let's just add another point. And maybe let's call it q. Okay, so if I'm doing the slope of a line, I just need to connect this, right? I'm going to see if I have, um, I, I'm going to, okay, I'm going to whistle. Okay, yeah, Mrs. Dean can whistle really good. That is something I learned when I had all my boys was how to whistle. But they're being really loud. Oh, here's a pencil. Here's an eraser. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this line right here. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I've got my line. I've got rise over run. I've got my two points. I've got points P and Q. Here's the thing, though. Here's my issue. If I want to find the slope of the tangent line, wouldn't the tangent line touch right here? And it would only touch that curve at that one point right there, right? And so when I'm looking at this line right here, this PQ, it's not very good of a, a estimate of tangent because they're both a positive slope, but the tangent's kind of going this way, and yeah, that doesn't really work. So um, I probably need to fix that. And so I'm going to give you a definition of PQ. I should have given you that a little bit before, before we started talking about how we can make this work. Line PQ, when you have two points on a curve, and you connect them with a straight line, you connect these two points, we call that a secant line. And you sh you probably remember that from geometry is called a secant line. Now, it's not really important that we like have that labeled, but I do want you to know that terminology because I'm going to use that vocabulary again and again. So I'm going to underline that's a secant line. So back to that question, what could I do to make this work better? Well, what if I moved Q a little bit closer? So if I moved Q down a little bit, and then I connected it. So I'm going to connect it here. Oh, that got a little curly there. Oh, look at that. So it moved down a little bit. What if I moved it a little closer? What if I moved it right here? And so then I went to P. And look at that. Every time I do that, it's going down a little bit. So it's getting closer and closer to my pink line, my tangent line. So how close could I get Q to P still having two points so that I could, I could use my formula to find the slope? Well, I could get Q really, really close, right? And if I could get Q really, really close to P, without being P, because if it became P, then I wouldn't have two points to do the slope. But if I could move Q really, really close to P, then I could have two points and I could find the slope. Eventually, my line PQ would be so close, P and Q would be so close together 
that it would be the, the slope of the tangent line and the slope of the secant line would actually be the same same line, wouldn't it? Because they'd be so close together. Think about it like when you did exponential functions and you got really, really close. Or if you're using an asymptote and you're getting really, really close to the line, but you're not quite touching it. If I can move Q really, really close. that will, So the big idea, how close can you get two points? I wonder. How close can you get two points? You know what? We're going to get them really really close. How close can you get two points? We can get these points so close that there's literally no difference between P and Q. Therefore, we get the slope of the secant is the slope of the tangent line because it's all about the slope. So how close can we? I'm going to put we can get them so close. I'm just going to say so close that there is literally, and I'm doing a lot of writing because I want you to have this whenever you go back to look at it, you have this vocabulary here, that there's literally no difference between P and Q. And remember, P and Q are my points up here. If we can get Q really, 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 really close to P, then I'll have the slope of the tangent line. So I'm going to use that terminology. I know it sounds funny. Really, really, and one more really. Really close. Uh, let's do... P is really, really, really close to Q. Therefore, the slope of the secant line, I'm just going to use SEC, will equal the slope of the tangent line. They're going to be, because they're going to be so close together. So you're like, um, okay, is that really math that you're talking about there? Really, 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 and literally no difference? Yes. And so what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to use some algebra and we're going to use a lot of actually I said that backwards we're going to use a little bit of calculus and a whole lot of algebra to get there. So let's draw this picture on this one. What is the equation of the tangent of y equals x squared at the point 1 1? So let's draw what they're saying. So let's draw our graph y equals x squared. Well, I know that if I go over 1, I'm going to go up 1. If I go over 2, 2 squared would be 4. 2, 3, 4. So that would be 4. I know it goes through 0, 0. So it's going to kind of, I'm going to try and draw it a little bit accurately. Okay, I missed that point there. But anyway, it goes up right there like that. I missed that point just a little bit. Okay, so I want to know the equation, equation of a line, well, remember that's y equals mx plus b. I want to know the equation of the tangent line right here at the point 1, 1. So if I were to draw it, it would probably look something like this. And I want to know y equals mx plus b. What's the equation of that tangent line? And now it's definitely not drawn to scale because it's going to drop down a little bit, but that's okay. You, you get the idea of what we're trying to do. If I'm going to write the equation of a line, y equals mx plus b, just algebraically, what do I need? Well, in order to write the equation of a line, I need a point and I need a slope, correct? And then I'm going to use point-slope formula, which is y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x sub 1. Okay, what do I have? Well, I have a point. The point they want me to use is 1, 1, but I don't know the slope. I don't know what that is. So I need to figure out the slope at that line. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use something called a limit. And a limit allows me to take P and Q 
and get them really, really, really close. Remember, really, really, really close. And I can figure out the slope. So we're going to give this a name. When you say really, 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 you mean, and we're going to write it over here, really, 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 really <laughs> equals the limit. So I'm going to start using really, 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 and instead I'm going to use the word a limit. And that's calculus right there. That limit is where it comes from is our calculus course. Okay, so we're going to do a couple of two. I'm going to give you a couple of things here. One is, whoops, one is we're going to have two points. I'm going to call this point down here P, and I'm going to call this point up here Q. And I know, I know Q's not really going to be up here. It's going to be really, really, really close to P. But just so I can draw it, I'm going to go ahead and do it this way. So let me get my eraser and connect these. And let's talk about the slope of the secant and the slope of the tangent. Now, like I said, I know that my picture is not the best right here because technically my Q is going to be really close. So let's call the point P one comma one, right? That's what it gave me. But this point Q, I want it to be any point that you can think of that's on this line, that's on the curve, right? It has to be on the curve but it's also gonna be on our secant. So here's what I'm gonna say. If I call this point X, what would you say that point is right there? This point was one, one. This would be X. And then the other point there would be X squared. Doesn't X, X squared represent any point that I want on this graph right here? Yeah, x, x squared, 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9, whatever it would be, that would be what the ordered pair would be. And so what I want to do is I want to find the slope of that tangent line right there using these two points. So let's go back here and let's write the slope equals, and now let's remember our formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So let's plug and chug and let's sub substitute this in. y2 would be x squared. So x squared minus. What is y1? It's 1. Over x2 would be x. x1 would be 1 minus 1. Okay. Well, mm, we probably could simplify that a little bit, and I'm hoping that you can actually, I'm going to just focus, I feel like that's blurry, and I don't know if it's my contacts or if it's actually blurry, it's my contacts. Okay, if I wanted to simplify this, mm, would it work? You have to know your algebra. X squared minus 1, that is the difference of perfect squares. And it factors into x and x, 1 and 1. It's the difference. So remember, that's where you subtract and add all over x minus 1. And I'll go ahead and put that in parentheses. Do you see what you can do? Remember back in your polynomial days, x minus 1 and x minus 1 cancels out. Oh, my goodness. The slope of the tangent line is nothing more than x plus one and you're like what okay so that means as x gets no no, no i'm sorry as p as q gets close to p so as q gets close to p or as this x right here as q is getting closer and closer to p x is approaching the value one like x is almost at one maybe it's like 1.000001. So as x approaches the value of 1, what happens to the slope of this secant line right here? As this q moves down the curve, as this x approaches the value of 1, what happens? Let's see. So let's say as x approaches 1, as it moves down the curve, 
what happens to our tangent line? So let's say what happens. to the slope of the, oh, my computer just, there it goes, the slope of the secant line. I hope that didn't mess up my recording. Nope, it still looks like it's going. So how do I do that? It's super easy. Algebraically, we're just going to set it up. We're going to do a table. We're going to say x, and we're going to say x plus 1. What happens as the secant line moves down the track? Okay, so we're going to move him down the track ever so slowly until we get to that one. We're not going to reach one, but we're going to get really close. So let's start. When x is 4, what is 4 plus 1? 4 plus 1 would be 5. Okay, let's try what happens as it gets, as it moves down the ramp right here, as it moves down to 3. When x is 3, 3 plus 1 is 4. Okay, let's try um, 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. So you see how the slope is changing. As x is moving closer, my slope, because remember this was my slope, my slope is getting closer and closer. So let's do, it can't be 1. Remember, we can't go to 1, but we can get really close. So let's do it to 1.5. 1.5 1 plus 1 would be 2.5. Okay, let's move a little closer. Let's do 1.25. So think about that. One and one point, so it'd be, ah, my eyeballs, 2.25. Okay, I'm going to add another row on here. Leave myself a little bit more room on these. Okay, uh, this is in green. So let's do 1.01. Let's get like really close. Like we're almost right on top of it. So that's going to be 2.01. How about 1.001? Well, that would be 2.001. What about if I put 1.00000001? If I moved all the way down to there? Well, do you see how you're just adding one to it? So 2.00000001. And, and I could keep going. I could do, how about 1.00001? It would be 2.00001. So as the x approaches the 1 value, what is this going to? This is getting really, really close to what value? It's the value of 2. So really, I could say that the slope of the secant line equals, uh, it equals 2. It's getting so, so, so close, it might as well be 2. So as x approaches 1, the slope of the secant is getting really close to 2. Remember, the whole reason we were doing that was because if we moved Q so, so, so close to P, that it actually became the slope of our tangent line. So if the slope of our secant is 2, then that means the slope of our tangent is also 2. Okay, that gave me the slope of my tangent line. Wait, I was trying to write the equation of my tangent line. I know the point is 1, 1, and now I know the slope of the secant line and the tangent line is 2. Can I write the equation of a line? You bet. I'm going to come over here. y minus 1, I'm using this point right here, equals the slope times x minus 1, using 1, 1. Simplify that. That's just a bunch of algebra. Y equals 1 minus, uh, equals 2X minus 2. I'm going to, oh, that should be a minus right there, y'all. I'm going to add 1 to both sides. So Y equals 2X minus 1. So the question on the table was, what is the equation of the tangent of Y equals X squared at the point 1, 1? Well, it's y equals 2x minus 1. Oh, my gosh. You just did your first calculus problem. Okay. So let me give you some notes up here that I meant to give you earlier, but then I got sidetracked. Okay. Here's what we did. As q approaches p, okay, as q moves down the line and approaches p, the slope of the secant is going to approach the slope of the tangent. As it moves down, it's going to get really, really close. Okay, that kind of made sense. I, I feel like you guys got that. 
The other th- question was, why can't I just use the point one one? Why do I need two points? Why two separate points? If I only use the point one one, then I would get one minus one y two minus y one over one minus one x two minus x one, and that would give me zero over zero. Zero over zero. Don't tell me that's zero because it's not. It is undefined. Okay. So it is undefined. I'm going to put a sad face because that makes us sad. We don't want undefined. Therefore, x cannot equal 1. Or, in our case, p cannot equal q. I have to have two different points. Okay? You can't do it with just that one point. You have to do a limit as q approaches p to figure out what that value of the slope is going to be. So we did it down here. We did the slope when x is 4. In other words, as, as q moved down the line, what does my slope do? Okay, so hopefully you're with me on that, and you're like, oh, okay, that, was, that wasn't that was too bad. So let's, do, you know what, let's just do some more of these. So turn your page, and we're going to see. I got, y'all got so many papers here. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so let's, Let's define what a limit is. Let me get my markers out of the way. I'll get it in the way. Okay, so what does a function, what what does a function as a variable approach? Okay, my notes there are what? Define a limit. What a function does. As a variable um, approaches a given value. Okay, so when we define a limit, it's basically what a function does as a variable approaches a given value. So Let's look at it from like just a picture. I think that might help. I feel like that was confusing what I just said. So let me draw a function here. And I'm going to put a point right here. I'm going to call this point A. So what a limit says is as I come towards A from the right and as I come towards A from the left, what does the function do? as I approach from either side. That's what I'm doing. A limit is going to be getting really, really close to A without actually touching it. What does this function approach? And that's going to be the slope of a curve on the tangent. Of a, of a, yeah, slope of a line at a curve mm, is the tangent. Oh, anyway, I get all messed up when I try to start saying that. So the more we say it, we'll get we'll get the hang of it. So anyway, so here we go. Given a function f of x equals x squared, what happens to f of x as it approaches the value 2? Okay, so that means I'm going to have a graph, and I'm going to approach that value of 2, and I'm going to see, um, you know, what, ha what happens to this function? What does it do? Now, you've been trained and conditioned to just plug this into your calculator, go to 2, and see what happens. And you can kind of do that. But what we're going to do is we're going to approach 2. We're not going to actually reach it. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So let's go 1, 2, 3. And then right here, let's put the 2 in the middle. And here's the trick. This is a little bit different. We're not caring about what happens at 2. We want to know as we approach 2 from the right and as we approach 2 from the left, what happens. So we're going to say a number bigger than 2. So maybe you think like, well, what about 2.5? Okay, let's put 2.5 right here. And now let's get a little bit smaller than 2.5. Let's do 2.1. And then let's get even smaller. But we can't equal 2. Let's be a little bit bigger than that. So how about 2.001? These are all approaching 2, but... They don't quite equal 2. From this side, let's kind of do the same thing. We did 2.5, so let's do 1.5. Okay, 
2.1 would be like 1.9. And then let's do um, 1.999. Okay. So we're going to plug this into our calculator. I'm going to pull this up. Ah. Okay, there we go. Okay, so we're doing squared. So I'm going to do 2.001 oh, 2 and I'm going to square it. And I notice it is 4.004, so 4.004. I'm going to do 2.1 and square it, and it's 4.41. And I'm going to do 2.5 and square it, and it's 6.25. And I had an extra one here. I thought I had marked that off one, but I didn't. Okay, so there we go. So now let's do 1.5 and square it, 2.25. Let's do 1.9 and square that. Oh, 1.9 squared. Did I do that right? Oh, I did. Okay, 3.61. And then 1.999 squared. And it's 3.996. Okay, so as I approach this value of 2 from the left, what value is it getting closer and closer to 2.25, 3.61, 3.996? It's getting really close to 4. As I approach from the right, 6, 4.41, 4.004, it's approaching 4. So as the function approaches from the left and the right, when it approaches the same value, that's called a limit. And this one would have the limit of as x approaches 2 of 4. So let's write that here. So the function must, well, let's write this first. Let's write it in a calculus form. How do you write this? Given the function f of x equals x squared, what happens to f of x as x approaches 2? That is called a limit, and you write it like this, the limit, L-I-M. And underneath it, we're going to say as x approaches 2, and then we're going to put the function, which in this case is x squared. We're going to put x squared right here. What does that equal? Well, we just did it. As it approaches 2, as x approaches 2, the function approaches the value of 4. So as the limit of x squared approaches 2, the value equals 4. Now, in order for a limit to exist, from the left and the right, it has to approach the same value. So I do want to kind of say that in here, that the function must approach, let's see, the function must approach the same value, uh, value um, from the left and the right. From the left and the right for the limit to exist. Now, a funny side note, if you are a Mean Girls fan, there's a line in the movie where she talks about the limit does not exist when she goes to the math contest. Every time I say that, I always think of that line in that movie. All right. Let me give you a general form of how you write limits. So we did the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared, and we got that it was 4. So in general, let me give you the general um, formula for a limit. All right. In general, you are going to say the limit as x approaches a of f of x is going to equal some value. I'm going to call it L. Okay. And the only rule that we have is that x cannot equal a. Okay, x cannot equal a. x never reaches it. It just gets really, really close, meaning x is not going to equal 2. It's just going to get really, really close. When it does equal 2, we got the value 4. Um, let's put in here, x never reaches a, it just gets really, really close. x never reaches a, 
it just gets really, really close. And it might be a little bit confusing as you think about this at first because you're like, but you just plugged in 2 and got x squared, which is 2 squared, is 4. Yes, because right now we're able to do this. Some things are going to happen, though. Maybe we get something where we have a hole in the graph and then we can't, it won't work to actually equal that number because we're going to get situations where it doesn't work. Case in point, this one we're about to do right now. So notice how I wrote it. Find the limit as x approaches 1 of x minus 1 over x squared minus 1. Now, I want you to plug the value 1 into the equation. 1 minus 1 is 0, and 1 minus, you get 0 over 0. That's undefined. That means x can't actually be the value of 1, because if it is, then it's undefined. And so what I want to do is find the limit as x approaches 1 and gets really, really close, but it doesn't actually equal 1. So I'm going to put 1 here, and remember, we don't care about equaling 1. We're just going to get really, really close. So I'm going to say 1.5, and I, I want to make a note here. Whenever you are doing your tables, don't put 1.5, 1.4, 1.0. Don't go that way. You want to work your way back to the 1. So 1.5, 1.01, and then let's do 1.0001, just a little bit on the other side. Coming back the other way, I'm going to do 0.5, I'm going to do 0.99, and then I'm going to do 0.999. I'm going to do that. So I'm going to mark this off because I'm not using this last column right here. Now, I've already done these in my calculator, so for the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and give you these values that I got. I got, for 1.5, I got 0.4, then I got 0.4975, then I got 0.4999. On the other side, starting outside, I got 0.6666, and then I got 0.4. 5025 and then I got 0. 0.5002. Okay, so the limit as x approaches 1, we know it can't equal 1 because when it equals 1, we get 0 over 0. But coming from the left side over, I'm looking at that, I think it's approaching 0. 0.5. From the right side coming over, hmm, I think it's also approaching 0. 0.5 on this side. So, the limit as x approaches 1 of x, oh, x minus 1 over x squared minus 1. I'll erase that little piece there I did over it. Is 0.5. There's my limit. I apologize again. I'm going to have to cut my video off just to go shut my door to get them quiet. Okay, so hopefully you're with me right now. I'm going to keep going. If you need to go back and watch any of that, you certainly can. So right now we just did two examples where one limit, if you plugged it in, you got 0 over 0, and the other one, you just plugged it in, you got 4. But here's my next question. What if the limit doesn't exist? Does the limit always exist? No, it does not. Sometimes you're going to have situations, let's take this one right here, where you're going to have holes in your graph, or maybe asymptotes. We're going to start off with holes. So let's say that I have, um, let's go right here at 2, and then we'll do um, negative 1, and we'll do positive 1. Okay, so let's say that my graph has a hole right here at 2, 1, and maybe it goes up, and down here at 2, negative 1, the graph does something, I don't know, down there like that. Okay. So remember, in order to be a limit, for the limit to exist, you have to approach from the left and the right and approach the same value. Well, let's look at this. We don't know what the function is. We're just going to call it f of x. The limit as x approaches, and we're going to do the value 2 right here. 
Now, I'm approaching from the left. When I label that, I'm going to put a little negative right there. And that means as X approaches 2 from the left, not negative 2, but as it approaches from the left. And I'm going to say of F of X, what does this limit approach? Well, if I'm looking at it from the left side as I travel up, I'm actually getting really close to what's the height of it. That's what the limit approaches is the height. I get really close to negative 1. Okay, when I come from the other side, the limit as X approaches 2, what do you think I'm going to put for um, 2 right there from the right? Hopefully you're thinking a plus sign and you would be right. From the right of F of X, because I don't know what this function is, I just made it up. Well, as I come from the right, I'm getting really, really close to 1. In this situation, the limit... Uh, as X approaches 2, I'm going to say from the right and the left of F of X, and I could have just said as it approaches 2 if I wanted to, I'm going to say it does not exist. There's no limit there because it doesn't approach the same thing from the left and the right. I'm going to highlight that. Okay, so the limit as X approaches 2 of F of X on what I just did it doesn't exist because remember up here we said the function must approach the same value from the left and the right for the limit to exist. That one doesn't. So let's do some examples of this so you can kind of get the idea. So let's draw a graph. Um, let's do one, two, one, two, three. Let's put a hole at 2, 3, and we'll draw that one going up, and we'll call, we'll call this function g of x. And then let's put another point at um, 2, 1, and we'll draw the graph going that way. So here we go. So what you're going to tell me is we're going to say the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of g of x. You're going to tell me what that one is. And then we're going to do the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of g of x. You're going to tell me what that is. And then you're going to tell me what's the limit as x approaches 2 of g of x. Okay. While you're doing that one, I'm going to go ahead and start drawing the next one. And then I'm going to come back while you're doing that one. And we're going to look at those. Okay, so I'm going to say 3, 5. I'm going to call that 5, and then I'm going to put a point right here at 5. Okay, I'm going to label this one h of x, move that over, and I'm going to write this now. So if you finish that one, go ahead and start on this one. Uh, h of x. This one's going to be the limit as x approaches 5. All right, so I'm going to go back, and now I'm going to do number 4. So the limit of g of x as we come from the left, so that's this side. Well, it looks like I'm getting really, really close to the value 1. So g of x approaches 1. When I come from the right side, as x is approaching 2, the function is getting really, really close to 3. Well, 1 and 3, clearly not the same, so the, the limit does not exist. On the other one, however, as I come from the left, I'm getting real, and I approach 5, I'm getting really, really close to that 3 value. When I come from the right, as the function gets really, really close to 5, my value is approaching 3 still. And you're like, but wait, there's a point up there. Yeah, but am I approaching it? No, I could cover it up. I'm approaching that point right there. When I get to 5, I jump up there. But I don't reach 5. I just get really, really close to it. So I'm also approaching 3. Does the limit exist? Yes. What is the limit? It's 3. Did I even use that point? 
No, I didn't. I didn't need it. All right. So hopefully that is making a little bit of sense now. I'm going to give you a fun little saying right here to give you. Uh, there it is. Okay. This is the big phrase. So if the left and right side limit blank approach blank, then the limit blank. If the left and right side limit do not approach the same value, the same number, whatever you want to put, then we know the limit does not exist. All right. So I'm going to give you a second to look at this next one. Find the limit of f of x as x 1 over x approaches 0. We're going to do exactly what we've been doing. Here we go. We're going to do the limit as x approaches 0. And we're going to say from the right of f of x. And then we're going to do as the limit as x approaches 0 from the left of f of x. And then we're going to make a conclusion or a decision about what happens overall. In other words, does the limit exist on this? So we're not going to use this last one right here. Sorry, I just put too many on there. We're going to approach 0. So 0 is going in the middle. We don't want to actually reach 0. Just so we're all using the same values, I'm going to use 0 0.001, 0 0.01, and 0.5. And from the other side, the same numbers, I'm just going to throw negatives on them. Negative 0.5, negative 0 0.01, negative 0 0.001. All right, I'm going to give you a second. I'm going to leave my clock running. I went and shut my door. Okay, here we go. Hopefully you're plugging those in. I'm going to actually, while you're doing that, I'm going to start drawing a graph so we can kind of see what this looks like. All right, I'm going to start plugging in the values I got. And then I just got the negatives over here. Okay. So, hmm, that's an interesting thing. And you know what? If we put zero right here, like if you plugged in zero, one over zero is a number over zero. And remember when you get a number over zero, it's undefined. So you can't just plug zero in. It's not going to work. So we're going to have to graph it. So here's what happens. As, as we approach, remember, zero is right here. Zero is our origin. As we come in from the right, what are these numbers doing? Two, 100, 1,000. As we get really, really close to zero, do you see that our graph is going up? It never touches zero. It just gets really, really close. It looks something like this. And then as we come in from the other side, as we get closer and closer to zero, do you see that these numbers are getting bigger but negatively, right? So they're coming in and they're doing something like this. And they're going down forever and ever and ever. And so like the zero line right here, you're never going to reach it. You can never get there. And if you graphed it on a calculator, you would see that picture. So... What value, as we come in from the right, is the the function, what's it going to do? It's, it's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, right? The smaller and closer we get, it's going to actually approach positive infinity. And you could just put infinity. That means the same thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put positive infinity. I like to label that. As I come in from the left, it's going down and down and down. So it's going to approach negative infinity and hopefully that makes sense so here's 
here's kind of the thing. The graphs can either go up like this, or they could be reversed, and they could go like this as they come into zero, or they could come in together and both sides go up, or they could come together and both go down. This situation, though, one's going to positive infinity and one's going to negative. Does the limit exist? No, they're going different places. This is positive, this is negative. They're not. So in this situation, the limit does not exist. Now, if they had both gone up to positive infinity, yes, the limit would be positive infinity. If they had both gone down, the limit would be negative infinity. So what we're going to say, though, is when they go, what we discovered on this with this line right here is that when they go up, I hope that is my computer keeps cutting off. When the limit of f of x as x approaches like a gives you positive or negative infinity, when you get a situation like this, that means you have a vertical asymptote. So let me change colors. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say if the limit. And I'm just going to use, I'm just going to say A from the left and the right of F of X um, equals positive or negative infinity. It could go either way. This gives you a vertical asymptote, which is super important to know. It gives you a vertical asymptote. All right, so that is really important to know. If I get a number value, I don't have an asymptote. But if I get positive or negative infinity, it's important for me to know that I've created an asymptote. So what I'm going to give you next is four scenarios of asymptotes. They, they actually make a lot of sense. Like you're going to be like, oh, well, I kind of knew that. But it's, I, I still want to show it to you in your notes. So take a second and draw four graphs on these squares. I see my computer jumping. I'm not sure why it's doing that. Hopefully it's, ooh, hopefully it's recording. Okay. Okay. That did a weird thing. Okay. There we go. Oh, it's still, okay. It's still going. Okay. Where are we at? Okay, we're almost at an hour, so I'm probably going to stop this here in a second. So what I want to do is I want to say, I'm going to have an asymptote here at A. You're going to put that same asymptote on every single graph. So we're going to do A, and we're going to talk about the different ways that we could approach A. There are going to be four different ways of what could happen at A. So here's what could happen. Let me move that up a little bit. All right. So we could be, and the function could be whatever we want, but as we do whatever, as we approach A, we go up to positive infinity. Okay. So the function does whatever. Um, the limit as X approaches A from the right of F of X could go to positive infinity. That's one scenario. That is coming from the right, and the graph in this situation goes up. Okay, the graph's going to go up. Now, we could come at positive infinity on this next one, but this time we're going to say the limit as x approaches um, a from the right of f of x. Instead of going up, it's going to go down. So we're going to say as it comes in, it goes down to negative infinity. So in this situation, the graph goes down. Now, we are still coming at the limit from the, from the right side. We're still approaching it from the right. We're approaching that constant. The other option is that we come at it from the left. So let's say the limit as x approaches a from the left of f of x. And let's, uh, let's make it go to positive infinity again. So coming from the left, so it's doing whatever it wants, and as it gets here, it shoots up, and it goes to positive infinity. This goes up. Okay? So it goes to positive infinity. Now this one is coming from the left 
as well. So let's come from the left again. But this time we're going to say the limit as x approaches a from the left of f of x equals. This one went up, so logically this one is coming and then it's going to go down to negative infinity. So this one is down. And again, I, I feel like these make sense, but I just wanted you to have it written out so that you could kind of see what does a vertical asymptote do. It goes up for forever or it goes down for forever. Coming from the other side, it goes up for forever or it goes down for forever. And in this situation, if coming from the left it went up and coming from the right it went up, the limit would exist and it would be infinity. It would still be an asymptote though. On this one, if it came from the right and went down and from the left and went down, the limit would exist and it would be negative infinity. All right, so let me see if that's where we're gonna stop. Yes, I think I'm gonna stop my video there for this one and I'm gonna go on into properties of limits next.